Welcome. This video is going to talk about the concept of limiting reactants. It's really rare that your reactants are present in the exact ratio that you need to use up all of them. Unlike an assembly line when you're making bikes and you would know exactly how many tires and how many seats you have so you can make exactly the projected number of bikes, chemical equations work a little different. Usually you deliberately have one reactant that you have lots of and the other one that's going to be limiting. So limiting is the one that's going to shut down the reaction, just like an assembly line shutting down if one part runs out, and then you'll have excess of the other one. And again, that's often deliberate because the excess reactant will keep the reaction rate going quickly. So there's reasons for doing it, and we're just going to you know, accept that that's what's going on. So the limiting reactant is the reactant you run out of, and it determines or limits how much product can form. The excess reactant is the reactant you're going to have leftovers of. So as I say, and scientists often make sure one reactant, the cheap or the safer one, is in large excess to speed up the reaction and to make sure the reaction continues until you use up all of your limiting reactant, which is usually your expensive or rare um, ingredient or reactant. So let's look at an example here. If you have 30 grams of sulfur and 100 grams of chlorine, which is the limiting reactant? Well, before I can decide which is the limiting reactant, I need to find out how many moles of S2Cl2 could either of these reactants make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by looking at my S8. And before I can make any prediction of product, I have to change that 30 grams into moles. And since one mole contains eight sulfur atoms, I take eight times 3207, and I see that S8 weighs 256.56 grams per mole. So 30 grams is only 0.117 moles of S8. That still doesn't tell me how much S2Cl2 it makes, but I can easily now use my equation and see that I get 4 moles of S2Cl2 from 1 mole of S8. So I can go ahead and multiply that 0.117 times 4, and I can expect to make 0.468 moles of S2Cl2 from the sulfur. So then the question is, will the chlorine make more sulfur, S2Cl2, than that, or less disulfur, dichloride? So I'm going to go ahead and take my chlorine, and I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to take my 100 grams of chlorine and find out how many moles of chlorine is that. Cl2 weighs 70.9 grams, since there's two chlorines in it. So 100 grams is 1.41 moles. So then when I look at my balanced equation, I see I get 4 moles of S2Cl2 from 4 moles of chlorine. So this is also how many moles of S2Cl2 I can make. So now I've got my comparison. I can make poor 0.468 moles from the sulfur, but I could make 1.41 moles from the chlorine. So this is the smaller or the limiting amount, and S8 is my limiting reactant. So how many moles of disulfur dichloride would form? Only the 0.468, because then I'm out of sulfur. So here's a try it. When magnesium is burned in the air, it forms magnesium oxide. How many grams of magnesium oxide should you form if 48.6 grams of magnesium reacts with 64 grams of oxygen? So your first step is to write a balanced equation, and then you need to convert your grams of each reactant to moles of each reactant. And then finally, you need to predict how much uh, magnesium oxide would form from each reactant. So I'd encourage you to pause and try this and see how much of this you can do on your own. For my balanced equation, I know I have magnesium. Since it's forming magnesium oxide, it combines with oxygen in the air. Magnesium oxide is just MgO, so that means I need a 2 here and a 2 here. 
if I write in my uh, starting amounts, I have 64 grams of oxygen, 48.6 grams of magnesium. So if I work with my magnesium first, 48.6 grams would be about 2 moles because it's 24.31 grams per mole. So 48.6 divided by 24.31, 1.999. So I'm going to go ahead and round that to 2 moles of mg. Since I get 2 moles of mgo from 2 moles of mg, this is also how much mgo I can make from my magnesium. So then let's see what my oxygen can do. My oxygen is 64 grams. O2 has a mass of 32. So this is also 2 moles. But now when I convert to product, I get 2 moles of MgO from just 1 mole of O2. So this actually becomes 4 moles of MgO which means my magnesium is my limiting reactant. So how many grams should I form? Well, since I can only make two moles of MgO because of the limiting amount of magnesium I have, I can now calculate my MgO, two moles of MgO is what I'm limited to, times the mass of one mole of MgO, which is 24.31 plus the 16, so 40.31 grams, times two is going to be 80.62 grams is what I should expect to make. Here's another example for you to try, and again you have to write the balanced equation and then convert your grams to moles, predict your product, and find your limiting reactant, and then finally determine how much product you can make. So I would encourage you to pause and try as much of this on your own as you can. Phosphorus P4 combines with oxygen O2 and my product says it's tetraphosphorus or P4 and then my oxygen is 10. So for balancing it I just need a 5 here and it's balanced. My starting amounts I have 25 grams of phosphorus 50 grams of oxygen. So now when I convert to molar amounts, my P4 